Bobby Lashley is United States champion. Mickey James is in the women's title picture. Randy Orton is the number one contender for the WWE title. And Brock Lesnar, who was on Monday Night Raw, he's out the pissing company. We be all the way back in 2006. And as for last night's Monday Night Raw, it was just fine. That's the sort of groundbreaking analysis you are subscribed to Cultaholic for. You are very welcome. I am Sideshow Ross from Cultaholic.com and here are all the WTF moments from last night's Raw. Hit the intro. You there. Hit the intro. WTF. WTF. No, 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 no. Randall, Randall, Keith, Randall, Keith, you are not entitled to a rematch for the WWE Championship. I remember talking the news on the internet, which means it's absolutely 100% correct, of course, that there was a new rule in WWE that had scrapped all automatic rematch clauses for title matches. And even though I think WWE have broken their own rule, because of course WWE do that, they put these silly rules in place and then break them. And I stand here and I moan about it. And it's a cycle that never bloody ends. Even though they have broken that rule a couple of times, I think they have. Off the top of my head, it's still a thing that exists in my mind. So there we have it. A WTF moment, Randy. You've got to earn your opportunities these days, Randy, you evil, evil snack. And this bollocks here, it does not suit Randy Orton whatsoever, does it? It doesn't, does it? Are we supposed to believe that this psychotic legend killer called Randall Randall Keith, Randall Keith, Randall Randall Keith, he took time out of his legend killing days to do some crappy Photoshop and he found that crappy Photoshop funny? I don't think so. That shoe doesn't fit. And that shoe doesn't fit because snakes don't even have feet. So they don't need shoes. So then we have some direct quotes from our boy here at Cultaholic, Keith Lee himself, when he's saying, Randy Orton, you are doing your best to forget about what happened last night at Payback. Doing your best to forget about the fact I beat you. So Keith Lee, as we just heard there, kicked off last night's Raw by saying to Randy Orton, hey, Randy, you're trying to forget about Keith. Hit the bloody music, editor man. Don't you forget about Keith. It's it's coming true. The prophecy is coming true. And by the way, WWE, my offer still stands to you right now. I stand here in front of you speaking on behalf of Cultaholic Ventures Limited. If you want to use that nonsense there as Keith Lee's entrance theme, you have my permission. Just throw a couple of WrestleMania front seat tickets my way for the trouble. You're welcome. Maybe. They never will, will they? But you know, why not? So this was the match I have been waiting a few short weeks for because after a few weeks of dominating in the Raw underground thingy, Dolph Ziggler was back on Monday Night Raw doing the professional wrestling inside the professional wrestling ring. And that's the issue and therefore the WTF moment. Dolph Ziggler was back doing the professional wrestling. Dolph Ziggler has proven beyond any shadow of any doubt inside Raw underground he is Brock Lesnar on steroids. In fact, nobody's seen or heard from Brock Lesnar for quite some time. Forget about this made of fake news that he's out of contract with WWE and he's a free agent. I reckon Dolph Ziggler has eaten Brock Lesnar and absorbed all of Brock Lesnar's fighting MMA prowess and powers. Yes, yeah, Ziggler was ripping off heads left and right inside Raw Underground. Then he comes back to Monday Night Raw inside the squared circle of the professional wrestling ring and he goes back to professional wrestling. Something, judging by his win-loss record over the past five or six years, he isn't very good at it anymore. He, he, he loses all the time. <laughs> and what do you know when he goes from the shoot fighting back to the pro wrestling? He loses once again. And I'm asking the question, Dolph Ziggler, why when you're clearly so good at the shoot fighting, did you not bring that into the professional wrestling ring? Loads of people do it these days. Why don't you? And next up, we've got to make the absolute goal of Nia Jax to claim I am the tag team champions when she must know the gimmick in front infringement cane is a moose that is a loose a boot this hoose what the hell are you doing Naya man you see Naya Jack's gimmick infringement cane sees you infringing on the gimmick that was team hell no and gimmick infringement cane wants you to know that he is coming 
not for you, but for your birth certificate that proves you are indeed a cousin of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Because of your transgressions on this week's Raw, gimmick infringement Kane is going to rip up your birth certificates. Therefore, when you say, I am the cousin of Dwayne The Rock Johnson, no one will believe you and everyone will laugh at you because gimmick infringement Kane is an evil little bastard. And then it was revealed that Shayna Baszler was wearing a t-shirt dedicated to the life and times of AEW superstar Iron Mike Tyson. And of course, Vince McMahon, who was absolutely 100% unaware of anything Mike Tyson did inside of an AEW ring, was probably still really, really angry. But still it is weird to see WWE superstars appearing live on Monday Night Raw, sporting garments dedicated to people from different sports, isn't it? You never really see it at all, do you? So then we see Vince McMahon's number one bitch himself, Adam Pearce, saying, men, if you can't do your job properly in keeping retribution outside of the Thunderdome, we'll hire some people who can do that job properly. And I was thinking, WWE, you've done SummerSlam inside the Thunderdome. You did Payback inside the Thunderdome. Both of those shows did not see a single second of retribution interference, so there is a team of people out there who can stop retribution getting inside the Thunderdome. How does Vince do it? I'm asking the question, WWE, since the Thunderdome does not move anywhere whatsoever, it's always in the same building. Why are you not hiring the same team of people who protected SummerSlam and protected Payback to such great effect? It makes no sense whatsoever to hire somebody different for Raw and SmackDown. And I thought you were a postman, Adam Pearce. A postman is always supposed to deliver, but all you're delivering right here is a load of absolute bollocks. And then we hear Lana say, that Mickey James has had the same ring gear since all the way back in 1998 and I get it, I know professional wrestling heels telling some pork pies getting us professional wrestling fans riled up at what they're saying but this is one of those examples where the professional wrestling heels saying some professional wrestling heelishness just look really silly. This just made Lana look like she doesn't know what she's talking about which you might not do, who knows Mickey changes her gear loads man Lana you numpty. So then we see that woman there off of the telly kit Kiss Ivar on the cheek. Ivar and that woman off of the telly then walk out of shot and Angel Garza walks into shot from the other direction, seemingly looking for the woman off of the telly with that expression on his face. The camera, it lingers on Angel Garza. He looks really evil and I don't want to know what was inside of his head. And after seeing the expression on Angel Garza's face right there, quite frankly, I was worried in which direction the Angel Garza character was going. He looked really, he looked too menacing there. He He's no angel there. Yep, I wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep, I wrong, wrong. That's a match I would like to see, said Byron Sachs, and I would love to see Mickey James challenge Asuka for the Raw Women's title. You take the Raw Women's title out of that match, though, Byron Saxton, and NXT TakeOver Toronto, it says hello there. As does an episode of Monday Night Raw from March of 2018 where Asuka and Mickie James went at it in the professional wrestling ring. One-on-one, -on -one, that match says hello as well. We've seen it already, man, Byron. Now, hang on a second there, WWE. Hold the pissing phone. The losing team will be no more. And we apparently live in a world where WWE, you know, a professional wrestling company who like to put smiles on people's faces. We make movies drink water very aggressively. You've got two teams there that people people like and most importantly of all people are actually invested in that's what I see on the interweb people love those two teams there and yet you've got your women's tag team champions being the tandem of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler and yet it's the teams that people like and are invested in that must have a match where there's a stipulation where the loser must split up. What a load of absolute bollocks. A Randy Orton golden shower, you love to see it. Dear viewer, ask me about something I did not expect to see when I flicked on this week's Monday Night Raw and I will tell you about Titus O'Neil. Yes, bloody Titus World Slide himself looking like an absolute killer. We've come a hell of a long way from that fateful night in Saudi Arabia. Titus was looking that badass. He was looking like Titus O'Neil from 2015 when he was a primetime player and all that malarkey with the best hot tag in professional wrestling. That's a thing that used to happen. And then we got to the end of that losing team must split up stipulation tag team match and the bloody eye iconics lost. 
they've split the eye iconics up. And you know, it's a crime to begin with. But it is the single worst crime in the history of the world. The WWE have split up the eye iconics without actually giving the eye iconics a chance to really flourish. If we were sat here having watched the eye iconics have a lengthy reign as women's tag team champions as heels, batting off all comers, being bastards while holding the tag team championships, proving how funny and how fantastic they are, I'd be fine with it. But the fact of the matter is, we haven't seen that. We haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to the I iconics on the main roster in WWE and they're gone scandalous unless of course this is just a part of a very elaborate storyline I see rumors online that Vince McMahon really sees something in Peyton Royce but doesn't see anything in Billy Kay even though Billy Kay by the way is quite clearly the funniest member of the I iconics she's the best seller in the I iconics she's absolutely fantastic yet apparently according to Twitter which is always right of course Vince McMahon sees nothing in her unless it's a part of an elaborate storyline this is just wrong and I cannot believe it's happened Oh my god, right, you see that picture there? Seth Rollins has got those wrist things on his wrists, right? And one of them came slightly undone, right? And you'll, you'll never guess what, right? Even though Seth Rollins today is the Monday Night Messina. That little wrist thing there, it says burn it down, right? And that's Seth Rollins' old gimmick. And I can't, I can't believe it. And I don't know about you at home, but the sound of Samoa Joe, of all people calling Seth, Rollins, a megalomaniac. It made me laugh. It made me lol. It made me ruffle. It made me pumicillar. It made me lamau. Samoa Joe. Yes, Samoa Joe, man. And then we get to the WTF moment that saw Titus O'Neil try to scare all of the kids all over the world. Just imagine the next time Titus O'Neil does his next slice of wholesomeness on behalf of WWE in the community, every single child who meets Titus O'Neil is going to be cowering over and absolutely pooping their pants, so they will. If the kids in attendance at one of these events in the future saw this week's Raw Underground and saw some of the things Titus O'Neil was doing, they will be scared you know what let's absolutely terrifying scenes from Titus O'Neil that was of course until Riddick Moss got in the ring and we live in a world where Riddick Moss is the hardest man in the world we talked about it earlier didn't we how Dolph Ziggler has eaten Brock Lesnar and absorbed all of Brock Lesnar's shoot fighting prowess well I reckon that Riddick Moss has somehow got all the prowess from Ziggler and Lesnar and put it in himself what the hell is going on Riddick Moss is the hardest man in the world what's that WWE Raw creative team we have the 24-7 title being defended as the 24-7 title should instead of just a throwaway match in the middle of Raw where 24-7 title rules have been suspended. It can't be. I think we're dead. The end is nigh, the end is nigh, time to run away, the end is nigh, nigh. And then it was at this point during the show we saw the Street Profits taking the piss out of Zelina Vega and how Zelina Vega is a very small woman <laughs> and how she can't get on the roller coasters at the theme parks and that's why she's always angry and stuff like that. And the Street Profits saying that about Zelina Vega means it's now time for this. Wankity wank, wankity wank. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Hello and welcome back to Wankity Wank, the section of these WTF moments where you, a sexual wank fez on Tweet Me, with a WTF moment I have missed from a professional wrestling show, and I give you all the credit just in case it's wrong. Thank you goes out to the doctor who knows a lot about roller coasters. Good luck to you. And so we go from that horribly menacing shot of Angel Garza being anything but an angel as he appears to stalk that woman off of the telly. And then we get to Angel Garza and Andrade's entrance for that Tornado Tag Team match. And that woman off of the telly is alongside Angel Garza. And I'm sure I'm not the only person asking this question right now. What happened in between those two scenes? What happened between Angel Garza walking up behind her, looking really menacing with a rose in his hand? and the entrance there. Big gap to fill there. I hope it was all all right. And I'm only asking this question because I thought after last week's Raw that woman off of the telly was all Team Ivar after that turkey leg and all of that malarkey. How can you turn down a turkey leg in favour of a rose? Even if Angel Garza looks like Angel Garza does, I'm taking the turkey leg all day long. Finally. 
A double stomp off the top rope that actually makes sense. Angel Gaza, I don't care what you did to get the woman off off the telly back on your side. You are back to being an angel right now. Long time viewers of this absolute crap series here on YouTube will know that I absolutely detest how somebody can know a double stomp off the top rope is coming, yet they hold themselves up like that waiting for a wrestler to kick them right in the face. How can that end well, Matt person taking the move? Yeah, Angel Gaza there has sorted that issue out right there and I love him. It's like one of those creepy fan meet and greet pictures, isn't it? Poor Peyton. But potentially a slightly bigger WTF moment than that image right there is Peyton Royce quite literally throwing Billy Kay, her former sister, best friend, whatever you want to say, throwing Billy Kay right into the wolves. Right to the wolves. Right to the wolves. And I'm well aware the I Iconics were forced to split up after losing that tag team match to the Riot Squad, but bloody hell, Peyton, what the hell are you doing? What changed so quickly there? In the words of Billy Kay herself and at the risk of upsetting the entire nation of Australia, you gotta be joking me, Peyton. What are you doing, you flaming galah, you bloody bastard? I'm sorry. But of course, a positive WTF moment from a very, very negative scenario. That is the I Iconics splitting up. I can't believe it's actually happened. Is Billy Kay's fantastic sell after that kick she got to the face. I'm telling you, Billy Kay, the best seller since Dolph Ziggler. And I don't know about you at home, but I'm asking this question on behalf of me and my ears because I think I heard this, but I'm not too sure if I heard this. Surely I didn't hear this, but I think I did hear this. Did the woman off off the telly call retribution Retiration at that point of the show right there? Because I think she did. And if that lady off off the television did do that, that's not even a word. It's summer fest all over again, running wild in the WWE universe. Why is she getting more TV time than so many actual members of the Monday Night Raw roster? It beggars belief. And I am here all day long for the way Randy Orton got his way into that pinfall position to win that main event match on last night's Raw. Quite frankly, he would not have been able to do that if he wasn't a snack. So it's a good job he is a no good slimy snack. Unbelievable scenes to round off this week's Raw and I do believe that might be it for all the WTF moments from last night's show. I thought it was absolutely Fine. Fine. Monday comes around, September comes around, Marrow's left WWE, the I Iconics have split up, and Netflix have cancelled the Big Show show. All of this coming after the end of August's horrible news, and that was Renee Young leaving WWE. Can this year get any worse? I hope not. I've been Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com. Thanks for watching. Ta-da.